What's happening guys? My name is Jamie, this is the Norwich Reptile Shed and in this video I'm going to be running through all the things I do ready to brewmate Daisy, our Herman's tortoise. So in this video, I'm going to be running through how I brewmate Daisy. So for those who don't know, Daisy is a rescue Herman's tortoise. We've had her for five years now, I believe. Um, and this will be her fourth brumation in the fridge, which is the method that I'm going to show you. Obviously, there's other ways of doing it and there's other variations of doing it the same way in the fridge, um, but this is how I do Daisy and this is how I think um, it should be done definitely in the UK um, it's nice and controlled and uh, it works really really well so in this video Daisy isn't actually going to go into brumation um, we've still got uh, two months left uh, before I, before she actually enters the fridge she's going to go into the fridge very close to uh, Christmas so uh, and at the time I'm filming this is the start of November so all the snakes in the shed they're winding down well not all the snakes but the snakes that are going into brumation are winding down um, and then Daisy is winding down um, from December onwards the reason I'm doing that is because at the, currently I can still grow weeds um, and still find plants in the garden that I can feed Daisy um, and I know in February um, going into March I might not have as much luck finding that sort of stuff so I'm going to uh, keep her going until then which is easy in this kind of controlled setting where I've got heat, I've got UV um, and it's all indoors um, so um, that's definitely uh, something to consider is bringing your tortoise indoors uh, especially now that the temperature is dropping beneath um, sort of 10 degrees so, uh, so it's definitely time uh, but I can still keep her warm um, and she won't start to shut down until I control that. So uh, let's go over some time scales. Let's put you back because you're not enjoying that, are you? So, time scales. Um, I start brumating Daisy a month before um, she's going to go in the fridge. So, it's a month long wind down, um, and that separates into. Um, basically limiting the heat, limiting the UV, um, limiting food and then just slowly winding that down as well as increasing stuff like bathing um, and things like that. So we'll start with food. So for me the fasting period for uh, an adult Herman's tortoise, um, you can go between three and four weeks but I do it four weeks uh, to keep things nice and easy, do it throughout a whole month and um, the same with the snakes and then you don't really get lost with numbers and dates and things like that. So I will feed her every day leading up to the point where it's a month uh, before hibernation or four weeks uh, and then that's it, no more food. Um, obviously during that time water is still going to be offered, it will still be in, in her bowl um, and heat will be there as well. Um, and the, the, the reason for the fasting is just to allow her body to completely flush out anything that's left in the gut, anything that's left in her stomach. Uh, and so when she actually enters hibernation, she's got no food or urine whatsoever inside her um, that will sit in there <laughs> while she's not being heated. So um, although we're going to limit the heat and the light eventually, we're still going to start by offering the same heat and light for a little while. And then, um, and then start to turn that off as well. But yeah, no more food um, for four weeks leading up to uh, entering the fridge. In terms of heat and light, um, you can go down to about four to five hours of heat and light a day. Um, and in the reptile room, it varies depending on what the temperature fluctuations are like in here. Um, but what I can do with my heat lamp here is because I mount it to the ceiling, I can raise it up. Um, and I can also take out the bulbs and lower the wattages 
um, and everything's on timers so I just start to knock away chip away a little bit um, and uh, reduce that down to uh, down to nothing um, leading up to probably about a week or two before uh, before she actually goes in and then just hope that it gets cool enough in here um, that uh, she starts to enter that kind of uh, brumation wind down period and she knows something's going on. So during that time as well, I'm going to be bathing her um, at least a few times a week. Um, you can do kind of daily, every two days. Um, I'll probably do sort of three to four times a week um, and that is just for 10 to 15 minutes in lukewarm water and that just helps keep her moisture levels up in her skin um, as, as well as it helps with a little bit of drinking as well so um, a little bit of water is, is no problem at all obviously we're offering water anyway it's the food that we're particularly worried about um, when it comes to being um, actually in the fridge so that covers the heating the lighting the food and the sort of time scale so now I'm going to run you through just quickly how I have a setup to go in the fridge, the box that I use, the substrate that's in that box, and also just a little bit of care um, and sort of the just checking a little bit of overall health before they uh, enter um, the fridge. So before we even think about brumating, we want to make sure our tortoise is in top health condition. Um, if you are concerned in any way, take them to a vet, a specialist vet um, that can see exotics uh, would be best. Um, but I kind of know Daisy after sort of these years of owning her and working with tortoises as well. Um, and the sort of key things we're looking out for are, are things like um, any sort of bacteria buildup. We're looking for um, anything gunky around the eyes, bubbling out of the nose can indicate sort of like a sinus infection, a respiratory infection. Um, and we just want to make sure that she's in just overall good health. Obviously, my one is grubby because. Uh, She's a tortoise and she spends all day walking around on this soil. But yeah, we're just making sure that she's in, in good health um, and she doesn't look too bad. The breathing isn't bad, there's no coughing, there's no spluttering, um, things like that. Things that are obviously going to um, escalate if we then drop them down to five degrees. So uh, I know she's in good health, she's nice and active, she's got a little bit of dry skin. Um, but the regular bathing will sort that out. This is probably due to her being indoors rather than being outside where she was a little bit more open to the elements. Um, now she's kind of kept a lot more drier. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, there, he, there she is. So just talking about tortoise um, health, we can also sort of quickly go over the weight. So what I actually do for her is I obviously have weights that um, I have throughout the years that she's been in hibernation for but uh, we can, what I normally use is the Jackson's weight ratio um, and that kind of helps with uh, um, determine if they're a healthy weight to go into uh, into hibernation but also I will beneath this I will link um, some more mathematical equations that we can do to work out their uh, bone density um, and their, and just generally uh, know a little bit more about what's going on with them once we've weighed them and measured them Okay, so another little trick as well that I've learned um, to basically help with um, no bacteria growth or any kind of fungal diseases or anything like that on the shell is we're going to give her shell just a tiny little clean with um, diluted Hebe scrub. So I've got a little bit of water in here already and we're going for like a, a one in five, one in, one in four tops. Um, so just a little bit in there. Not a lot, actually, that's not a lot at all there. So just a little bit in there. Give it a mix up. So a one in four ratio is what they would, uh, what a vet would use to sort of wash around a, a wound leading up to, uh, leading up to a surgery so um, I'm going for like a one in five here um, and then we're just going to give her shell just a little clean with this I'm going to make sure not to get it in her eyes or anything like that if I haven't mentioned it already this is Hebe scrub um, you could also use uh, Tamadine um, just have a little uh, 
Google and uh, look into that. But this just helps with any kind of fungal problems that could arise. Just gives it a nice clean. Sorry, Daisy, that's not very nice for you, I'm sure. And that's given her just a little antiseptic clean off um, and that just helps make sure the shell is absolutely clean and there's nothing that can cause any problems in any of the gaps, ridges or, you know, little minute cracks or anything like that that's in the shell. So now we've got a clean tortoise. So uh, let's talk about the box. Okay, so we've got a healthy tortoise. Uh, that weighs correct. Uh, we've got an empty tortoise, so she's got no food in her gut um, because you know we've done it all the time. Um, we know that she is the correct weight according to the Jackson's ratio or another calculation that we can use for bone density. And we've waited the full amount of time for uh, for the wind down. She's been well soaked. She's uh, nice and hydrated. Everything's looking good, um, and we've got no heat, no light, and she's like, "Man, get me, get me in the fridge. I'm ready. I'm ready to sleep." So, so uh, this is uh, this is her box. This is Daisy's box, just in case I forget. Um, and what I have always done ever since I've got her is use um, a sterilised topsoil. Um, get it from Wix, B and Q in the UK, any of those kind of places. It's got no additives in it. It's got no fertilizers it's not compost um, it's it's just a uh, yeah, topsoil um, and it's slightly damp okay it's not dry it's not dusty um, but it's slightly damp um, so I'm not gonna put water in it or anything like that but what I do is I I kind of put the soil in the box a little bit before um, like a couple of weeks before the actual um, the, the time to go in the fridge and that just helps to keep um, her from drying out. We don't want this to be absolutely bone dry um, and it's definitely not wet. Okay, I didn't say wet, I said damp. So uh, this is Daisy obviously, here we go. This, this is her best acting skills now because Daisy isn't going into brumation, we, we've covered this. But uh, this is the size box she's got. I'll, I'll, get, I'll do a little zoom down to the box. So this is her box, this is an ideal size, it actually fits in the fridge side to side. Um, and she's got enough room in there to kind of move to do a little bit of digging which she will do because they won't fall asleep instantly once they get in the fridge um, and it's high enough on the sides that if she does within the first day or two if she does decide that she doesn't want to be in there um, she can't climb out and do any damage or anything like that so uh, it's a nice secure box it's a nice size um, obviously it depends on your tortoise um, how many you're putting in the fridge. I've got some smaller boxes that I put my mum's tortoises in because um, they're a smaller species. But um, she has this box and uh, that's the perfect size for her. Okay, so this is the fridge. Um, Daisy is lucky enough to have her own fridge and I'd strongly recommend that. If you can, just pick up a secondhand fridge and keep it in um, a spare room. Don't be tempted to keep it somewhere really cold because that actually doesn't work very well with fridges. She actually shares this with another two tortoises that my mum um, brings over for brumation as well. Um, and what I'd suggest is to put things like bottles of water in there if you can, um, and that helps kind of stabilise the temperature and obviously turn the fridge on a good few weeks before the actual date that they're going to go into brumation. Um, and that helps obviously make sure that your fridge is working and your, your temperature is stable because they do go up and down a lot. Until they get to uh, until they get to that point. So uh, what I will do with Daisy and well all the tortoises is open the door every single day. It's kind of like my morning thing. Just give the door an, an open and a close. That allows air to circulate in there. What I'm missing from this setup is my thermometers. So I'd have two digital thermometers. One will be on like a probe that I'm, I poke into Daisy's box, um, and I can have that outside, and that helps me see the temperature at all times as well as another one that I just put in there. So I've got two readings and I'll make sure that if one of them's broken or giving a false reading, I can spot that. Okay, so um, just a couple of cheap um, uh, thermometers and you're safe. The temperature I'm actually going for is five degrees. You don't really want to go any colder than that and you don't want to go any warmer than that. 
uh, too warm and they won't shut down properly. Um, their metabolism might still stay up there um, and you're just gonna have problems. Too cold and you will end up killing your tortoise. So uh, obviously once you get into freezing temperatures, that's bad. And even a couple of, temp um, couple of degrees uh, closer to that, um, you can do things like uh, blindness and um, brain damage and just things like that. So five degrees is the optimum number. Try and stick to that. Make sure your fridge is working perfectly and you know what that is before it goes in there. So the only other thing I do during the entire length of the brumation is every week, once a week, I will take the tortoises out and I will weigh them. Um, so I'll have a weight before they go in, so I'll know that. For her, it's normally just over, well, it's 2,000 and something grams. Um, and then, so I know the initial weight, and then what I'm looking for is weight, no weight loss greater than 1% of her body weight. Um, a week so I'll just keep that number in my head I'll know what the one percent of whatever her weight is um, and then every time I weigh her just make sure that she hasn't lost more than that and Daisy is awesome at brumating so I've never had an issue with her um, and uh, yeah so I'm hoping this year will be no different so there's nothing really left for it now Daisy's gonna do her best acting skills and she's gonna go in the fridge for a sleep but she's not because she's not going really in there. So I hope that helped guys. Just a little guide to how we do the fridge method with a Herman's tortoise here at Norwich Reptile Shed. Now if tortoise content is something that you're into, don't forget I've got loads of videos dating back from like last year showing you how I built the tortoise run, the indoor stuff, the outdoor stuff, the lighting, uh, planting the outside stuff up, plus a tour of Norfolk Tortoise Club as well. So uh, if that's your, if you're into that, then uh, head over and check that out. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget, please hit that like, that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel any further, head over to Patreon where it will cost you three pounds a month, and that helps pay for the bills and equipment and building new fun reptile enclosures and just generally surviving in the UK during this time. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.